Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how I'm making a homemade sheet metal break. I've purchased some sheet metal for a project that I'm working on and unfortunately I can't bend it by hand. So what I've done is I've taken some 3 inch by 3 inch angle iron that's 3 8 an inch thick. I purchased a 24 foot stick. I had it cut into three sections. It's about $70 worth of material. The supplier charged me $6 to, to make the cut with tax about $84. I'm using some material I already own. Um, I'll use these pieces as the um, stand and these will be verticals. It'll have a finish height of 33 and a half inches which is the same height as my saw horses. And then uh, one of the more difficult parts is, is making the hinges. So what I've done is I've bought a piece of black pipe and then I've bought a common ground rod because this fits almost perfectly inside the black pipe and this is a ten and four dollar solution so it's a fourteen dollar solution will make plenty of hinges hinges will be four inches long a piece and uh, I'll be using an angle grinder I'll be using a uh, Miller plasma cutter spin this around it's a Spectrum 375 a little bit of gouging that'll need to be done here. And then I've got a Millimatic 211. Um, I also have a, a Hobart Handler 135. The 135 could probably pull this project off, but some of the thicknesses here um, make it a little more difficult. And that welder is just not as easy to use as this one. So this Millimatic 211 is, is really, really nice to work with. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've taken some bolts that I have that are left over and I have welded them to the base of my uh, assembly and what this will let me do is it'll just make sure that this thing sits flat. My shop has uh, got an uneven floor just like every other shop I've ever been in and uh, this will be get just a little bit easier to work with. So I'm using a uh, Rhino welding helmet that I got on Amazon.com for $88. Um, I had a uh, Miller that was really nice uh, and this is Taz. Uh, he just kind of hangs around and barks at stuff. It's an important part of every project. So anyway, what I'll do now is attach the uh, vertical components to the stands. These are roughly 33 inches long and um, there'll be a little bit more material in the back of the leg than in the front. These legs are 31 and a half inches tall. I want to talk just for a moment about my setup. I'm using some uh, magnetic angles. These make uh, making accurate joints a little bit easier. So I have wire brushed where I'm about to weld to get all the scale off. I'm using one on each side. Don't really need one on each side. So let's pull that back off. I'm using one on the side just to keep this stable and one back here to keep this square. And then what I'll do is proceed to tack weld it. If you don't have a gauge, I highly recommend it. The gauge makes it easy to see what size material you're welding. On the Miller, they have a um, auto set function. You just dial the gauge and weld. And it's really nice. Sometimes you have to bump it a little bit one way or the other. But I keep it clipped to my ground clamp because this is never very far from where I'm welding. So go ahead and clamp this in. Never seem to get it right always on the top, but that's okay. Uh, got lots of wire.
there is one of my legs completed. I'll go ahead and weld the other one off camera. Um, this material is dirty, so you're seeing a lot of spatter and sparks and crap. Um, you know, if I was building something that uh, somebody's life depended on, I would probably take the time to clean it. But this is a shop tool made half from scrap and half from purchased material, and uh, it'll be just fine. So I want to take a moment to talk about assembly because, quite frankly, this is a critical section of the project. So, at this point, um, I have, you know, laid out how I want this thing to be welded together. So I built my two legs. There's a nut underneath each one. Nothing magical, just something I had around, about a half an inch tall. That gives it feet to sit on so that if the ground is unlevel, my fixture doesn't rock. I have welded the legs to the bases. Now, this piece of material I just had laying around, it was 66 inches long, so I cut it in half. It had a slant at each end, and so I went ahead and just put those towards the front because if I'm going to kick something, it'll probably be that side. I have biased the legs a little bit forward because as I roll up to bend my material, I'm likely to put pressure towards the back, so if I have a little bit longer back legs, it'll be good. I'm using one of my um, pieces of angle as a backstop to get both legs in the same spot, and then I, the angle is six and a half feet long, and so I have positioned the legs to be 60 inches across to the outside. And I keep looking over my shoulder because I've ordered pizza from Papa John's and I'm waiting for dinner. It'll be tasty. It always is. Um, so at this point, I've made sure these are 60 inches and these are 60 inches apart. And this is roughly square because this is how it's going to assemble. So uh, when my pizza got here, I went to turn the gas off and realized that I'd never turned it on. So, yeah, you know, shit happens. I'll go over the welds again. It's not the end of the world in this case. If it was something important, it would need to be redone. So, first thing I'm going to do is position my first piece of angle iron. I'm going to do this gently because gravity is all that's holding my legs in. So now I've got a tape measure and just see if I've got my ends right. Eh, they're not right. I can tell by just looking at them. grind the front in order to get this notch. What I'm going to do is grind off the front edge of this and uh, that'll let this sit in here completely. So what I'm going to do at this point is just uh, tack weld it in place and make it square to the channel and kind of move on with things. Alright, so uh, what I'm going to do now is just tack weld the legs in place and uh, just kind of verify the physical fit. This is nice. This is exactly what I was looking for. Both legs are welded on. 
So, what makes this magical is uh, having a hinge. So, if you can make a hinge out of black pipe and ground rod, there is probably less than a sixteenth of an inch clearance there. So, that's more than enough for the type of equipment that I'm trying to build. You could probably order tighter tolerance tubing and pin, um, but uh, I'm on a budget and I'm on a timeline. So what I'm going to do is cut these, I'm going to cut the nipples or the, the threaded portion off, cut a four inch section and proceed to cut two two inch sections and four one inch sections that I will assemble hinges out of and then I'll cut four inch pieces this and I'll also notch this to accept this piece of pipe. So I have one of my hinge assemblies completed. So. Uh, what it's made from is, I'll come a little closer to the camera. So you've got a piece of ground rod, which happens to be the right size piece of steel with copper coating. One one inch piece of black half inch pipe, a two inch piece, and a one inch piece. And that forms a nice hinge with a little bit left over. So what I'll do is I'll weld here and here, and then weld these two to one piece weld this one to the other and basically I've got a captive crude but effective and inexpensive hinge. It'll go right into here and uh, I uh, am waiting for my uh, plasma cutter to cool off. It pulls a little too much electricity from that wall socket and I haven't run a dedicated plug for it yet. I need to run a 230 volt circuit for it. Uh, I did that for my welder and it's been just beautiful since then. Um, so uh, let me weld this and I'll be back. Notched both pieces of angle. I have welded the hinge onto one piece of angle and then I'm using some C clamps and some just leftover angle from another project to bring both pieces of angle iron flush. And this will allow me to create a hinge and so what the next step is to weld the angle to the other piece of the hinge that I fabricated and um, that's what I'm fixing to do now. I guess I decided to keep recording so this will be a moment of truth. We'll take the clamps off. So far it didn't shift. That's a good sign. And I'm just going to cheat here and use this as a temporary Alright, so it's a little bit on the very tight side. There we go. Looks like I've got a little bit too tight. Hopefully that'll wear out. scratches here on the material. Um, my hack job with the plasma cutter wasn't as clean as I'd like, but I'm pretty sure the end result will bend metal. Okay, so at this point it's uh, more or less complete. I've welded a handle on here. Hinges are broken in. So, I'm going to add some marks to this so that I know where the edge is. My hinges tend to overcut. And just because I like to see lines, I'm going to go ahead and mark the whole thing. So it looks like I have overswung by about a quarter of an inch. And in fact, it looks like my hinge line lines up with the back of this. So um, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to clamp something down, let's bend something, see what happens. Alright, so I have a uh, 60 inch piece of wide, I'm sorry, 60 inch wide piece of 040 aluminum. This is alloy 5052. Um, you know it's flexible, but it's like, it's like every person you ever dated. It doesn't bend if it doesn't have a little help. You usually 
lose when you try to make it bend without the right tools. So here you go. Let's give it a whirl. corners for some reason, but I can live with this because I gotta tell you, that is a whole lot better than anything I can do by hand. So uh, let me pop this loose and I'll show off what I just did. This is a piece of scrap. So. You can see here that I've got a really nice radius on this. That was in the intent. I did not want a crisp corner on this. I wanted a uh, radius. So there you have it. Nice radius angle. And um, if I had to buy the material new, there's probably $150 worth of material here. I don't count the cost of the clamps because uh, those can be reused for other things. It doesn't matter to me that I have to clamp the angle down when I want to use it. I need this for occasional bending and this will meet my needs. Thanks for watching my YouTube video and have a great day. Okay, so I, you know, this is a piece of scrap. So one more thing. Let's see if we can make channel out of this. So that's a little bit harder to do. It's uh, fighting me pretty good. Actually, I see what the issue here is. I need to move my clamp back some. Again, this is a 60 inch wide piece of aluminum, so if what you're working on is smaller, you'll probably have an easier time of it. So there you go. Let's uh, clear these clamps and see what we did. by hand, and I doubt you can either. Thanks for watching my video.